Hey y'all, back at it. I spent way too much, it, it doesn't look like much for the amount of work I put in this. I, I worked on this thing for a couple of days. I um, had surgery on my eye last Tuesday and the uh, doctor said I couldn't weld till Saturday. So I got up Saturday morning and started going through my stuff, getting my wrenches out and all my old time stuff. This is uh, my life's dream. I've been collecting uh, tools, antique tools, all kinds of tools, uh, really into wrenches and, and uh, micrometers, different things. But I got a lot of these and I got all my big ones out. Now these are my railroad wrenches and, and my whole idea was to display them. And uh, of course, to put them in boxes and put them away. And that's not displaying them and that's, is that collecting? I don't know. Is it just, piling them up, hoarding them, I don't know. But my whole idea is to uh, get these things out here and get them to, uh, to be seen. And so this is my living museum, my dynamic museum. I'm gonna get everything running on it and, and I'll have these uh, displays up here. So I, I got this, the, the bottom wrench is a three inch capacity. The, the very top one is an inch and five eighths. And then there are different sizes in there. They, they, it looks like there's six wrenches, but there's only five because one of them's got a wrench on both ends. But uh, this is this is up there pretty high. I had to go up and down the ladder about 25 times, but it's it's done. I still got to paint the support bracket and everything. But uh, you can see it's it's up there. When I when I went through all my stuff now, what happened was. I got so much stuff, and uh, so I went through and I found, I don't know if you can see it, but these are little chain wrenches, and then there's a, a big one next to it, and then there's another one, a couple more, a couple, three, four more, and I getting, I'm working on the, the long, the heavy, the big wrenches, and I even got this one out here which is, uh, man, this one's uh, almost six feet tall. This is, a, this is a, the big mama. And the one next to it, I think, somebody cut the, the handle off. But uh, I got 10 of these, so I figure if I get five on uh, a display, and I want them up high, it makes it good because the it, this display from standing down here is probably eight feet off the ground and and the wrenches are big enough that you don't have to be close to them you can see them well so if I, I what do I got I figure it take me four displays to get all the wrenches up here because I have this right here this is a going through my stuff. Now this is a, uh, an old, uh, uh, a fairly early uh, style wrench, which you uh, turn that wrench and uh, that screw, and you can adjust it to the size of the, of the, uh, the nut. I, it's probably made for square nuts. And then I got, oh man, this one your old style pipe wrench and the one under which is a large wrench and those will go on uh, another display along with this one here which hey, I'm blind I think I'm blind let me pull it out oh. all this stuff's heavy I'm gonna set it right here on the ground, and this is a uh, an old atlas. Man, what am I blind? There it is. It is painted 1888. This is a probably my pride and joy out of all the big wrenches. So I'll put those four together, and five and five would be ten. But uh, I'll also uh, show you over here. I got some more work done. Uh, talked to the gentleman 
that I bought this lathe, the old, uh, I've been calling it a, a Woodburn Light and Company. When I, when I purchased it from him, he told me that it was a, a Worcester, Massachusetts, uh, manufactured by Woodburn Light and Company, which was in business from 46 to 51, something like that. And now he, he's talked to somebody who's very knowledgeable in this uh, really pre-Civil War ancient, getting back close to the, you know, within uh, three or four decades of the Industrial Revolution here in this country. And he uh, believes it could be an S.C. Coombs, which is a Samuel Coombs. And uh, the irony is that S.C. Coombs was in business in Worcester, Massachusetts from uh, 45 to 52 so they were actually um, contemporaries of each other and another thing is we're not sure but it's possible that they actually worked in, in the same building there was a gentleman um, Flagg, Samuel Flagg who was supposed to be the first uh, person that actually made machine tools in Worcester, Massachusetts he opened a shop in 1839 he had a foundry, so he was casting parts for other people, and uh, uh, you know you can't tell he might have he might have cast this for S. E. Coombs or Woodburn Light and Company. Uh, he was operating a foundry, and he was renting out space in his building because you needed power. And apparently he had a steam engine, or he, he cast his own steam engine, made his own steam engine, so he would uh, rent out power, and you could, um, you know, line shaft, everything was run on line shaft, so. Uh, S.C. Coombs and Woodburn Lighting Company are from the same area, and possibly, I mean, it's very difficult to get back to what was really happening back in the 1840s. And uh, it's, I'm going to try to research and see if I can get some uh, addresses. But anyway, what I was showing here was I got my change gears down here to the other end. And I got, finally got them adjusted around the way I like them. And I, and I think it's pretty good. And this is where they belong because this is uh, the end where the change gears goes. So I moved them from the other end down to here. And so what I did over here, which was I was planning on, was I put this other uh, support back in, and I and I uh, put a light. This is a more modern articulated light with a, uh, a round and a, a tube with also a uh, magnifying glass in it. Uh, but it, you need things like this uh, to machine well, and I just thought my. Uh, support structure came out there pretty good and I also have a I uh, put another one here which this is a an older there we go this is this is probably uh, you know from the 40s maybe the 50s but this is a, a an older light I got this light when I I bought an 1896 uh, star lathe uh, the light goes away there you go but I, I also I want to show you what I did uh, for the support on uh, on the old lathe, the old Worcester lathe. We'll call it a Worcester lathe because we're not sure who manufactured it. It's always a difficulty to do that, to, to actually find out. So what I did, because this is such an old piece, I, I uh, would not drill any holes in it. I, I put those feet. The feet that I made drill into the uh, bottom of the trailer to hold it down. And so the, it just captures the, the feet that were cast with this lathe. And also made this, which uh, just goes in here and I capture it with this one bolt. This, this is for traveling because uh, I'm going to take this trailer on the road, take it out to shows. and. Uh, uh, when you travel, this thing weighs about 800 pounds. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, have any problems, no losses, n nothing like that. 
so I, I also captured it right here this one um, I captured it off the support for the uh, change gears and and this one uh, half inch bolt just uh, bolts in here and captures it it just put a you know this is all modern stuff but you have to be safe and, and protect your equipment and that's where you, you know, go up here and and, and, and I think it would make a nice display for uh, the change gears and this is where they go so this is where they belong and normally if you if you had a, a I'm gonna say a modern lathe but a lathe with change gears which would have been in the, the late 1800s uh, early 1900s they, they might have had a, a place down here at the end where the, the uh, change gears could be kept so that when you needed them to to, for your specified uh, uh, screw threads that you were going to turn, you could turn internal, external, uh, external. But anyway, th this is uh, what I came up with to support this light over here, and uh, we're working on it. Well, I'll talk to you guys later when I get a little bit more done. Bye.